Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about investment bags. This is by far my most asked about topic, so I thought I would do another video on the matter. I have already done a whole video dedicated to what bags hold their value and what bags don't, and I will link that below if you wanna watch it, but the essential conclusion of that video was that if you really want a bag that will hold its value and that you might be able to resell in five or 10 years time and still make good money on it, then you really have to look at the three brands Chanel, Louis Vuitton and Hermes and the two best ones really being Hermes and Chanel. However I thought I would do a video on all the other bags that aren't included in those brands so if you're just not a fan of those three brands or otherwise if you're not really concerned about bags holding their resale value if you have no intention of reselling your bag but you just want something which is going to look stylish for many years to come I thought I would cover that in this video. So I have five bags which I do think will last the test of time in terms of the style of and whether they'll still look good in a few years time and I also have five picks of bags which I think you should maybe stay away from so I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get going. I also wanted to mention that I have set up a new Facebook group and this is exclusively dedicated to talking about bags so if you are a fan of bags and you want to chat about new releases, what bags you're thinking about buying, maybe bags that you're thinking about selling, anything to do with bags then go ahead and join I will leave the link down below. This was inspired by two things really, one I'm a part of a few groups on on Facebook, one of which is a planner group, and I'm not even a planner, but I love being part of it because I think there's such a sense of community, people post about their planners, about their lives, and it's just really nice. And the second thing is, I know I haven't been the best at keeping up with comments this year, and I do wanna get better at it, but one of my favorite things is when I don't always get to a comment and then I see someone else has responded in answer to a question, and I love that, and I think it's amazing, and there's obviously such a wealth of knowledge in this kind of little handbag community so I thought it'd be great if we'd have a place on Facebook. I'm on Facebook a lot of the time anyway, it's how I communicate with Dan, which is strange I know, but we've always done it, I use it for work, I do all kinds of stuff on Facebook, so I'm always on there and I'll be there kind of chatting with people. This isn't really supposed to be like a Q&A for me, but more like a community where everyone can talk about bags and the things that they're interested in. So I hope that you all want to join, um, I will leave it below as I mentioned, and you do have to request to join, but I'll be monitoring it and accepting in your request so just wanted to mention that quickly. So my first pick of the best investment bags to buy right now is the Lady Dior bag. I haven't really talked about Dior that much on my channel before. It's definitely a beautiful brand, it's just not one that I've been particularly drawn to in the past. That said, the Lady Dior has been around since 1994 I believe, which is a pretty long time already and it still seems to be incredibly popular. So I would say this is a pretty safe bet. Dior are incredibly good at maintaining the classic design while still introducing new features. So they are always introducing new colors and textures, patterns, just added little details to keep people interested. But they always are very careful about keeping the main shape and design the same, which is the biggest indicator as to whether a bag will last the test of time and also will hold its resale value. So Dior is definitely one to look at. They are on the pricey side. I think they run about 2000 upwards. But as I said, if you are looking for something that will last you quite a few years, then this is definitely one to consider. My next pick is the Fendi Peekaboo and this is another bag that's been around for a pretty long time. Not quite as long as the Lady Dior but this has still had a pretty good run. I think it was first introduced in 2009. It got really popular really quickly and then it kind of died down and then it had a resurgence and it's been pretty popular ever since. It's a very classic design which I think is why it's become so popular and even though this isn't a crazy it bag I think it does have enduring appeal and the fact that it has lasted nine years and it's still very very popular is an indication of that success so I feel like Fendi is one of those brands anyway which kind of flies under the radar a bit so it's not an overtly in your face bag I think it comes in a lot of beautiful fabrics and colors they always keep it interesting and a Fendi peekaboo is definitely one of the safe bets I think. 
Next up are Saint Laurent bags and in particular I'm thinking of those with the YSL logo. Even though the fashion house has gone through many different designers and changes and rebrands, they've kept the YSL logo pretty consistent and that really does help in terms of how classic their bags look. I'm thinking particularly here of the smaller ones as well because the larger ones I think are more prone to kind of dramatic redesigns. However, with a smaller bag, you know, there's only so much you can do. An envelope clutch will be in fashion in 10, 20 years time. They had them 10 or 20 years ago. So smaller clutches and bags are always a safe bet. And anything with the YSL logo, I think will still look very current for many years to come. The logo has been around since the 1960s, I think. So it's been around for a very long time and I just don't see them changing it, especially as now they're known as just Saint Laurent and they're still keeping hold of this YSL logo. So this is definitely a pretty safe one. May not do quite so well on the resale market, but they still do look very current, I think, and I think they will continue to look that way for many years to come. My next choice is the Givenchy Antigona, and I'm sure a few people are going to disagree with me on this one, but for me, this is a bit of a classic. I get asked about it all the time still. People want to know if it's outdated, if they should still go for it. But for me, I do think this is a very classic bag, which will stand the test of time. It's been around for a very long time already, and considering it was such a popular it bag, it's done very well to last this long, and I think it's purely down to how classic the design is, you know. There aren't any bells or whistles or anything like that, and I always think that helps with the longevity of a bag. If there's nothing too novel about it, I always think of the Chloe Paddington as a really good example of a bag that was super popular, but because it had so much going on, I think it dated quite quickly. Whereas this bag, it's very simple as you can see, and this is just something that I think people will reach for over and over again. I still see it all the time on the streets, I see it on Instagram a lot, I still use mine a lot, and I just think this is going to be around for quite a few years. So. If you are debasing it, then I would say, you know, go for it. I recommend the bag. I really like mine. And it's so easy to dress up or down. So I think this one is a pretty safe bet. And my last pick this category are the Marlboro Classics. I'm thinking here of the Bayswater and the Lily. I still see these bags all the time. They've been popular for many years already. The Bayswater in particular was popular even before I was interested in bags. So it's been around for many years and I can see them being popular for many years to come. Obviously Marlboro has been through a bit of a rough patch and I'm not completely convinced about their rebrand. And they have been introducing new versions of the Bayswater, but at the same time they've been very careful to leave the original Bayswater as it is and the same as the Lily because they are such popular bags. They continue to release new colours and I just think that these are two very solid bags which are very useful and I think they will continue to be popular for many years, particularly in the UK. So if you're looking at Marlboro then I still think it's a pretty safe bet. Obviously no one knows what's going to happen but I don't think those two bags are going anywhere. Now for my picks of the worst bags to invest in right now. Now obviously this is not going to be a super comprehensive list. The truth is that the vast majority of bags out there will not stand the test of time and that's just the nature of fashion. Nature of trends, you know, they come and go and everything goes in cycles. So if I was going to list every single bag which won't look super current in five years time then we'll be here a very long time. So instead I'm just going to pick the ones which I think are either super popular or really stand out to me as being very of the moment which might not date so well. I did also want to say though that this should just be taken with a pinch of salt. One, because it's just my opinion so I could very well be wrong. Um, but also I think that the biggest reason you should buy a bag is because you love it. One of the bags I'm actually including on this list is one that I own and I bought it with the full knowledge that it may not look so fashionable in a few years time but I bought it because I loved it and I think that's essentially what you should do as well. Life is too short to be worried about what's going to look very on trend in 10 years time. I think you should just go for what you love and what you enjoy carrying and wearing. That said, I hope you find this list useful anyway and I'm going to get started with my first one. So my first pick this category are the Valentino Rockstud or the Lockstud bags. Now even though the shoes seem to be very popular and I absolutely love the shoes, I do think those are complete classics. I do see Valentino moving a little bit away from their classic bags in that kind of studded variety. They still do have the studded elements in their newer designs, but they are definitely evolving, which is no bad thing but I don't think it bodes well for the very classic kind of rock stud, lock stud bag. So even though it's had a very good run because these bags were super popular for a really long time, I'm not convinced that they're still going to be around in say five years time. 
I haven't really seen any bags which I think are going to be massive hits either from their newer lines. They are evolving and they're definitely very beautiful bags but as for whether they're going to be around in you know quite a few years time I have my suspicions so if you're looking to Valentino for something very classic I would say stay more towards the shoes. I'm not convinced about the bags. My next choice is a Chloe bag and here I'm thinking of the Chloe Nile. Chloe is a bit of a funny one because they've obviously had so many hit bags over the years, so many of the so-called it bags have belonged to them and they just are very good at churning out the really popular, very current looking bags. That said, they have had some very classic ones as well. The Marcy I still think is going very strong, the Drew has had a lot of popularity. The Nile, however, I do think is a little bit gimmicky, apologies if you love it, but it is a very, very fashiony one and even though it's very popular now, I'm not sure that this one is going to stand the test of time. I don't see it doing very well in a few years time and I know everyone went crazy over it and it was really sold out but if you're looking at Chloe I think there are probably safer bets to go for than the Nile. It's a very beautiful bag and I understand the appeal but um, I definitely think this one could go the way of the Paddington and other really popular bags that they've had in the past. My next pick are the Prada Safiano totes and obviously I have my double bag here which I do love to bits but I bought it with the knowledge that they are probably on their way out. They've had a really good run and I think the double bag is probably doing a little bit better than the Luxe tote but I think the Safiano leather in general is looking a bit more outdated now and I don't know how popular it will be in the years to come. I do think that Prada probably need to mix it up a bit more. They are trying new designs now but even the newer ones just seem to be kind of slightly updates on this design and I think they probably need to look at kind of reinventing the wheel a little bit more than just offering tiny tweaks to their design. Obviously it's a very classic bag and you know these are very popular with working women for that reason but if you did want something like this I would say lean more towards the Givenchy Antigona. These bags are beautiful but again I just think that they need to update the Safian leather if they do want to look a bit more current. So even though I love it and I'm not regressing buying mine at all, I do wonder if it's still going to be that popular in like five years time. My fourth pick is more of a general one and it's more of a style of bag which is the bucket bag. Bucket bags became really popular really quickly when Mansa Gavrielle first launched. I know they were sold out everywhere and everyone went nuts but I'm not sure that bucket bags are going to last the test of time. Obviously they are quite you know an odd style, it isn't something that's only just been released but I do think that there are more practical styles which are perhaps more functional and will better stand the test of time. Here I'm thinking of flat bags and camera bags and things like that. Not that there's anything wrong with bucket bags but when I think of you know even Chanel releasing their Gabrielle bag I can really see it going more in the direction of the Mademoiselle bags which are pretty much forgotten about now versus the boy bag which is obviously still very popular today. So I could be wrong but if you wanted something which was definitely going to be very classic I would maybe think long and hard before going for a bucket bag especially a really pricey one. Obviously Mansa Gavrielle are more reasonably priced in terms of luxury bags but if you're going to drop some serious money on a Chanel bag I would veer more towards the classic than going for something trendier like a bucket bag. And my fifth one is a much more general one but I wanted to do this because I think it will be hopefully a useful guiding point if you are trying to navigate the world of bags and trying to decide on your next purchase. So I would always say be very careful of seasonal bags and when I say seasonal I mean limited run bags are just produced for that season. Usually those are the ones that date quickest because they are designed to look very fashionable and very of the moment. And if they're looking right of the moment, then next year they probably won't look of the moment. And that's just the way fashion works. Design houses and fashion companies and all retail companies really want you to keep buying. So if you want to buy a classic, I would always be wary of seasonal lines. And that is regardless of where it's coming from, whether it's, you know, Chanel or Mulberry or Anya Hindemarch or Louis Vuitton. It doesn't matter if it's seasonal. I would always be very choosy and very careful about what you buy. If you do want to get a seasonal bag, then I would say, always look for clean lines you know classic shapes avoid too many crazy patterns or bells and whistles those are the things that are going to be more likely to date so always go for good quality material and as simple as you can if you are going for seasonal 
And I did just want to have an honourable mention for the Gucci Marmont because I know I'm going to get asked about it. The reason why I didn't include this in either list is because it's kind of stumped me a little bit. So obviously I love my Gucci Marmont bags, but when I first got it I was like this is 100% a trendy bag. You know, I knew it was a bit of a fad, but it has actually really impressed me with its longevity and how popular it still is. I think in part it's because it does have a very classic shape. One of the reasons why I like it is that it looks quite similar to my Chanel bag so I obviously like that kind of style and aesthetic and it is just a very very classic looking bag you know I don't think you can go wrong with a chain flat bag they go with everything they're very easy to wear and I think that's a big reason for their popularity so even though I'm still kind of thinking it's a trendy bag I do think this will be around for a few years to come five years, 10 years, I'm not so sure, but for now I'm definitely enjoying mine. And that is it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you have any questions or if you agree or disagree with me. I am happy to debate any of these choices. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.